in between Street Fighter 6, Diablo 4 and Summer Game Mass, watch my showcase on the 6th of June, it's no wonder that releases are looking a little thin, where the biggest miss is that we should have gotten Silk Song but it was delayed, but I'm expecting some available now type announcements, so indie game releases of interest as of right now begins with Revival Recolonization, a 4x strategy game set in the year 3315 on a post-apocalyptic version of Earth. Yes, indeed, this is a civilization-like title, but set many years after a cataclysmic event where you lead one of several surviving clans, each having their own unique gimmick. The post-apocalyptic setting allows for more fantasy elements, where you have everything from mutant creatures to mechanical automatons roaming the world. Having special structures like your own tribal tree, and special abilities such as terraforming, so there looks to be plenty of variety. However, this studio is not Phyrexis, so I wouldn't get my hopes up too high since it looks like a nightmare to balance, but it's neat to see someone else taking a shot in this space. A neat looking title that has fire and flames as a central mechanic and theme is Nocturnal, a hauntingly beautiful title where our hero returns home after many years to find the island covered in fog, having to carve a path through and to dispel the mist. Fire here is used both in puzzle solving such as to light torches, ignite switches and more, and can be also used in combat against enemies coming from dark magic. There is an upgrade system here where you collect ash from defeated enemies, but I'm not seeing any stamina meters, so it's not a 2D souls like, and doesn't appear to be a metroidvania either, so it leans more on the linear end of things. Developer Fail Better Games is one of the powerhouses in the narrative RPG space, having made games like Sunless Sea and Sunless Skies, where their next title, most curiously, is a detective visual novel dating sim game named Mask of the Rose. This is set in the self-described, darkly hilarious gothic underworld of Fallen London, where Victorian London is now located underground in a cavern where the sun doesn't shine, Parliament has sunk into the river Thames, and Queen Victoria is hardly seen in public and never leaves the palace. Amid this most interesting of settings, you play as the custom character, having to play matchmaker among the different characters or even for yourself, where the cast here includes a tentacle Lovecraftian creature, someone that used to be in hell, commoners who both love and hate this new London and more. There are time management elements where you can take on odd jobs and explore the city, where the detective part comes in when people get murdered, but apparently the rules of death don't apply here, so it's a very weird, hard to describe game that is worth keeping an eye on due to the pedigree. Okay, so obviously, one look at Fur Quest and the association immediately jumps to Undertale being a turn-based RPG with unique mini-games for every enemy, and has a slightly dark backstory which sets things up to be interesting as well. On the surface, this looks like a fun little title where four animals go on an adventure and become best friends, but is set in a world where every soul has two sides, a main and an invert. A happy main is paired with a sad invert and so on, where if either version manages to capture the soul of the other half, they transform into a more powerful version known as a hero soul. But this caused too many conflicts, which left the prince of the land to outright banning friendships. Definitely not what I was expecting based on the visuals, but it is this exact setup that makes this interesting, where the minigames look fun and could be a hidden gem. Another title that I've been watching for years releases next month in Tiny Tor, where development and marketing efforts for this have really accelerated in the past couple of months, where this is a throwback 16-bit action platformer that looks so faithful to the era in games and hopefully brings back some of those same childhood memories. You play as the young God of Thunder, adventuring through the realms of Asgard and defeating mythical monsters along the way, all with the help of your trusty hammer Mjolnir. 
The hammer is used in puzzles, platforming and even combat, where bouncing and ricocheting it off surfaces is one of the main gimmicks in this game. Add to that the gorgeous pixel art by renowned pixel artist Hank Niebaugh and you have a game that looks awesome, so hopefully the variety in level designs will match expectations. Oh, as a bonus, do check out God of Thunder as well, which is free on Steam, where this game was my childhood and I suspect still holds up. Speaking of childhood memories, a beautiful watercolour narrative adventure game is Nocturnia, named after a region in France where you play as a young girl revisiting childhood memories from spending the long summer days with your grandmother all those many years ago. These memories are starting to fade and your grandmother's passing has led you right back to the region. The art style here is the highlight, having some of the most stunning watercolour that I have seen in games, where it's about collecting photos, sounds and scents to create a unique journal to relive those carefree summer days. As such, it looks like a very pleasant entry, something that I myself could use in 2023, so I'll be looking forward to this next month. I played an early build of Fall of Porcupine and was impressed with it, where you play as a pigeon who has a junior doctor in a small town, being a slice of life adventure that reminded me strongly of Night in the Woods. It's not something that I would normally go for, but the demo did convince me otherwise, where uncovering the mysteries of the small town, getting to know the characters, and living another life are the main draws here. The developer does talk about the clash between work and daily life, amplified by the stressful schedule of such a junior doctor, but it's something that I'm sure you'll be able to relate to as well and looks like a heartwarming tale. Technically, this game is a re-release of a title that was previously on Apple Arcade only, but having not played that, the Steam release of Bleak Sword DX has my attention, being a minimalist action-adventure title in a grim dark, low-fidelity world. I love the minimalist pixel art and the tiny dioramas, where it is all combat all the time in this. The DX version includes all DLC content with new levels and enemy layouts, with modes like a roguelite style randomizer, boss rush gauntlet and gladiator survival style arena modes as well, where this is being published by Devolver Digital so the quality should be there. Now this next title I'm excited about since the very weirdly named Trepang 2 is an all-action first-person shooter with a very interesting backstory to the title, more on that later. This is a linear first-person shooter that looks absolutely fantastic, where the guns, action and explosions are the main draws, where you play as a superhuman soldier awakened from stasis after a mysterious group breaks you out. You do however have no memory of your former life, so it's a quest to find out the truth and to make the bad guys pay. You will have superhuman strength, bullet time, cloaking and even melee combat options with some of the most visceral and brutal gunplay that I have come across. However, I don't know how generic the story setup would be since this just reeks of a betrayal type twist where the people that broke you out are the bad guys instead, so we'll have to see on the plot, but the action will be where it's at, where it's a bold move to make a fully single player one of these in 2023. Okay, so on to the interesting bit. A trepang is apparently the Indonesian word for sea cucumber, a marine invertebrate that expels its organs as a self-defense mechanism, also known as evisceration, where the brutality of the combat in this game is based around that concept. 
where also of note is that there isn't any trace of Drupang 1 on the internet, with Steam forums pointing to their Discord server, saying that you can get it from there and is a side scroller, but I'm not going to be downloading strange files and will just wait for this. Ever since I came across this title, I've been looking forward to it since the action, world and setting looks awesome, having highlighted this on the channel a number of times so far. This is a roguelite platformer where you're fighting your way into an enemy fortress to uncover the secret of the Oblivion Code, one that is tied into how robots became self-aware and the current state of the world. It's an action-packed title with two playable combat machines to choose from and with more than 23 unique weapons and plenty of meta progression upgrades from run to run makes Oblivion Override one to watch with more upcoming roguelites in this video.